So there's one cell in your body that takes a beating. It does the majority of detoxification. And that cell is called the hepatocyte. And hepatocytes are liver cells. So your liver is the main detoxification organ of the entire body. Uh, to a lesser degree, the kidneys help you detoxify. The in small intestine helps you detoxify. The skin can help you detoxify. And even your fat cells can help to some degree um, detoxify. But it's that liver that takes a beating. So today we're going to talk about how to make sure your liver is doing its job. But I want to give you some solutions that are simple, easy changes to um, protect yourself. But you do need to be aware of the quantity of chemicals that we are swimming in every day, because they do affect us in a negative way, but it's hard to pinpoint one thing versus another because there are so many chemicals and variables. It's very hard to test for this. I mean, think about this. We have 27 trillion pounds of chemicals that are produced or imported from other places to the US every single year. That's 74 billion pounds every single day which comes out to about 250 pounds of chemicals per person. So there is a lot of exposure of chemicals. Now you might say, well, I live a pretty clean life and I, I don't, I'm not really exposed to chemicals. It doesn't include fuels, doesn't include pesticides. It doesn't even include the chemicals in your food. And I'm not even including the poisons. I'm sorry, did I say poisons? I meant medications from healthcare. I mean, it's just bizarre to me that if we think about health care. Well, that's just another way we're exposed to more chemicals to suppress symptoms. I mean, really what's missing in healthcare is the health part. I mean, what is in healthcare that's actually creating more health? These chemicals, they build up the half-life and some of these chemicals can be from weeks to years to decades. And a half-life of a substance is that you're reducing the potency of something by 50% over a period of time. So it becomes less activated. And a lot of times they'll measure the half-life of certain chemicals, okay? The book on toxicology, you can see there's actually quite a few toxins in our environment and a lot of information on it. But the half-life and a lot of these chemicals are measured uh, usually through the blood, not necessarily through your tissues, the cells outside the blood, which is a whole different thing. We definitely need to do three things. We need to be aware of the chemicals, we need to reduce the exposure to the chemicals, and we definitely need to increase the um, ability to detoxify the chemicals. And the main support needs to be to the hepatocyte, that liver cell. And now a lot of these chemicals in the environment act like estrogen, okay? So they're called estrogen disruptors or even endocrine disruptors because what they do to the endocrine system, they can act and mimic like your hormones. And so they can really throw off the thyroid, the adrenals, the pituitary, all these different hormonal pathways. And there's definitely a direct connection between what those chemicals do and how they damage the DNA, how they alter the DNA. They can mutate and change the DNA. And they create a lot of diseases, a lot of oxidation and free radical damage. And of course, this free radical damage can create a whole cascade of problems. And this is why antioxidants help to counter that. Our bodies make antioxidants and we also can get antioxidants from food. Now, another really interesting thing about certain chemicals in foods that can help us detoxify is the fact that we already have the machinery, the enzymes within our bodies, okay? We have certain enzymes that can turn poisons into harmless particles, but they can become activated by certain things in our foods. So sometimes we have this idea that it's just the antioxidants that are kind of countering the oxidation, but also they're activating something that we already have inside. We just need to turn on those genes to do the job a little bit better. And I just had my DNA tested. And apparently I also have certain detoxifying genes that are not working uh, like they should. So I have to work harder at getting them to work. So there's a group of enzymes uh, that are called the cytochrome P450 enzymes. And there's this whole biochemical pathway that goes from phase one, phase two, phase three, that helps to turn these poisons into things that are harmless. So the majority of that occurs in that hepatocyte, but it does occur in other places in the body. So I'm going to be going through uh, things that we can do to minimize exposure to the poisons, 
what you can do to activate them, and also the number one food that will help you activate these enzymes that you already have. All we have to do is trigger them. We have toxins and pollution from the air, from the water, from the food, <laughs> from beauty products, right? Lotions, shampoo, uh, hair gels, conditioners, hair dyes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We need to make sure those are as clean as possible. Let's just kind of go down the list and just talk about it. So air pollution, I would highly recommend getting some type of filter. There's one good one called Merv 8. And that can be very essential if you live in polluted areas, especially if you live in the city, you want that air filter to minimize the amount of um, chemicals. And that can make a big difference in your exposure. Number two, growing certain plants that can help soak up chemicals like benzene and formaldehyde and many of the other chemicals in the air. So it's not a very expensive thing to just have more plants in your house. And I'm gonna put a video down below of what plants I would recommend. Spending more time in nature is very, very therapeutic from just breathing in healthy air. All right, what about a water filter? Do you have a shower filter? Do you have a water filter? Uh, you definitely need to get one. The amount of crap that's in our water I mean, even chlorine, yes, chlorine will kill off pathogens, but on the flip side, it can increase the risk of cancer. So we have chlorine, we have fluoride, we have all these other chemicals in the water. So you need to get a water filter and they don't have to be expensive. I mean, a really simple, uh, relatively inexpensive water filter and you get all different kinds. You can get it from the shower or a pitcher or under the counter or over the counter. Just go to Zero Water. I'll put a link down below. I'm not affiliated with them, but they have a good system. They have three ways of getting rid of chemicals, the carbon filter. They have one that binds to heavy metals and they have another filter that will help reduce other things like chloride and fluoride and things like that. Now, another really important thing is fish, okay? Always it's well caught. Farm-raised fish are loaded with PCBs, okay? Just more chemicals. You wanna do wild caught. And you definitely want to consume the fish that are smaller. You don't want to consume the big fish, like avoid swordfish, shark, tuna. These fish accumulate a lot of mercury um, because they tend to eat smaller fish that eat smaller fish. So there's a much higher concentration of mercury, like sometimes up to a thousand times more. And that mercury can accumulate in your body. But with the smaller fish, there's much, much less mercury. And the selenium can bind to the mercury that's in there and inactivate it so it's not a problem. Now, what about organic vegetables? Absolutely. Let's say you just can't afford organic. You can break down a considerable amount of organophosphates by using apple cider vinegar and water. You just put a fourth of a cup of apple cider vinegar and a gallon of water and wash your vegetables. You can remove a lot of chemicals just by that simple procedure. So organic food um, is without pesticides. And it is more nutrient dense. Now, I already mentioned the chemical-free beauty products. So many people are exposing their bodies, uh, deodorants and hand creams, and they're not really reading the label. These things accumulate. They go into the liver. The next thing I would really avoid is canned foods. Canned foods greatly increase things called BPAs. And I'm not going to get into the technicalities of them, but um, if you go through this book right here and look at the section... Of BPAs, you're going to find that they create a lot of problems with your endocrine system. They're endocrine disruptors. And you're going to get a lot of them if you're consistently eating canned foods, especially those soups. So I would just avoid canned foods, or if you do consume them, don't consume them often. All right. So let's bring up the number one food to help strengthen and trigger the detoxifying enzymes in the hepatocyte, the liver cell. And that is cruciferous vegetables. Now there's a lot of other things that'll do it too, like garlic, for example, onion will do it, oregano, but the cruciferous family of vegetables are potent inducers of cytochrome P450 enzymes. And there's a tremendous amount of research on this. It's hardcore data. Those foods consumed on a regular basis can help to not just uh, pull chemicals out, but they also provide a lot of other benefits anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer. Now, every time you deal with toxins or free radicals or antioxidants, people always think about plants, right? Because we all know that uh, these antioxidants are not in you know, meats. Well, 
That's not actually true. I recently was involved in a study sending my beef from my farm into a study. Okay, it's called Beef Nutrient Density Study. I just want to show you this one graph right here. I don't know if you can see this. See this, this green bar right here? Okay, right there versus the blue bar versus the this other colored bar right here. I think it's pink. So right here we have Dr. Berg's beef. <laughs> and then we have other farmers on average of the grass fed beef. And then we have the grain fed beef. Now, what this is evaluating is phytonutrients. These are plant-based chemicals, plant-based chemicals in beef. Now, the healthier the beef, the more you're going to have these plant-based chemicals that can act as antioxidants and create a lot of other health benefits. But you can see there are definitely more, if you compare grain-fed to grass-fed, definitely more. But the healthier the beef, like I do grass-fed, grass-finished, okay? And um, I really take care of my cattle. So you can see the amount of phytonutrients. This would be a great uh, substitute for vegetables if you have gut problems, right? Because um, there's definitely an increase in people doing carnivore because of their gut issues. And people will say, well, you can't get all the nutrients from beef or other types of organ meats. Well, apparently you can, but I really think it's the quality. Well, this just proves it. It's the quality of meat. You know, you're not going to go down to the local um, Safeway grocery store and get deli meat and think you're going to be getting those phytonutrients. You know, you're going to have to go to a farmer's market or you're going to have to get grass fed, grass finished to really get the full health benefits of these products. Is the animal being fed grains, okay, or grass and weeds grown on healthy soils? So we have the cruciferous vegetables like the kale, the broccoli, the arugula, the radish. All those are very, very key. But you also have all the herbs too that can greatly help you. And then we have uh, things that contain B vitamins that can help you detoxify. I did a whole video on that. It's actually a very interesting video, which I'll put a link down below. And then we have minerals that help you detoxify like selenium, like in Brazil nuts, very important to help um, increase glutathione, which is another enzyme to help break down poisons. And your gut microbiome is so important in supporting detoxification. If you don't have the full diversity of your gut microbes, that's going to limit your ability to get rid of poisons. So start consuming foods with microbes like sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, very important. The next thing I want to talk about is fasting. When you fast, especially periodic prolonged fasting, you increase your own body's network of antioxidants, okay? You strengthen and turn on the genes that help you detoxify your liver starts increasing its capacity to get rid of poisons. You go through what's called autophagy, which is the recycling of old damaged proteins and getting rid of pathogens, strengthening the systems that help keep you clean. You know, I had this really bizarre thought. I would love to go into a nursing home and just replace their food just to see what would happen to the health of these elderly people. I think the need for medications would go way down and it would probably just be miraculous. But unfortunately, I just found something out that's uh, pretty depressing that there's certain regulations about people in nursing homes and I think even hospitals that they have to eat every 14 hours and they have to have these certain foods, which I'm looking at being not very, very healthy. So I think it'd be very difficult, unfortunately, to put them on some type of intermittent fasting program which is exactly what they need and actually have them eat food that came from the farm. That would be just awesome. But if you have the ability to do intermittent fasting, do it. It's going to help you. And the last point about toxins is exercise and sweating. Very important. When you exercise, you stimulate uh, genes that help you detoxify. But if you overtrain, you're going to really shut down the systems to get rid of toxins. Because think about it, when you exercise, you're generating a lot of free radical damage and oxidation from just the metabolism of pushing yourself. So that requires a strong, robust antioxidant system. There are certain things like grapefruit, okay, and grapefruit juice and St. John's wort that inhibit that detoxification system in the hepatocyte. 
So this is why if someone's taking a drug or a medication and they're taking grapefruit juice at the same time, um, they're going to retain these chemicals in their body. And I'm not telling you not to consume them. I'm just telling you that um, they do tend to slow down the elimination of poisons. There's a very interesting video on a vitamin deficiency that can greatly influence your ability to detoxify. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.